Well, Steve, thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, waste is a huge and a hugely complex subject. Uh, as I'm finding out now, sort of six to eight months into the job, uh, it's, it's easy to focus on the day-to-day -day issues and lose sight of what we should be trying to achieve over the longer term. I've got a long-term vision for England where businesses use resources more efficiently, using fewer resources but creating more goods, where substantially less waste from all sources is created in the first place, where the vast majority of what is created is reused or recycled, because products are specifically designed for repair, reuse, or recycling, and because local councils and waste companies have made reuse and recycling easy. And in turn, this provides uh, better quality feedstocks to replace virgin raw materials. Uh, where we have a thriving, growing resource management industry, where surplus edible food feeds people, while that below the quality line goes to animals, if safe, and otherwise to anaerobic digestion. And where whatever's left goes to efficient energy production and mass landfill, fly tipping, roadside rubbish are a distant memory. Now, I like to think that most people would agree with this. Uh, and uh, so, that really, I think the key question is how do we get there? Well, government can set the conditions by providing the policy and legal framework. But a truly circular economy hinges on everyone playing their part. Resource management industry, businesses more generally, local authorities, and of course, uh, ordinary people. So I was very pleased to see the Environmental Services Association uh, showing leadership through their Going for Growth report, launched yesterday, uh, which I think contains some really very interesting uh, suggestions. And I share David Palmer Jones's view that the circular economy can only work if all parts of the supply chain work together. There are a number of things which need to happen. We need to improve our understanding of how to prevent waste. And I hope our recent call for evidence for the waste prevention program will help us greatly there. And thank you to those who've responded. Manufacturers and retailers need to design their products to facilitate repair, reuse, and recycling. And going for growth majors on that, too. The quality of recycled material streams offered to manufacturers in place of virgin material needs to be improved. We need manufacturers to favour recycled over virgin materials. We need local councils to work together, as some already are doing, to save money and improve their negotiating position when their contracts roll over. Local authorities and waste management companies need to make it easy for businesses, particularly SMEs, to recycle commercial and industrial waste. And there's real space here for innovation, for different types of business model that could deliver uh, collective contracts for SMEs, for example. And better publicly available data on CNI waste uh, being produced would help realize these opportunities. We must help the public maximize uh, reuse and recycling, making avoiding contamination easier, uh, replicating best practice across the country without resorting to fining and threatening people who make honest mistakes. We need appropriate infrastructure for collection, storing, transporting, sorting and processing. We need to increase the proportion of green waste, uh, in particular um, food going to compost, 
or anaerobic digestion. And we need proportionate, effective enforcement to minimise crime and negligence and create a level playing field. Now, all of us must recognise that we live in times of dramatically constrained financial resources, both for central and for local government. Businesses and taxpayers are suffering too, so we have to keep taxes and regulatory burdens to a minimum. Householders face soaring bills, so local government needs to keep council tax as low as possible. Whether we like it or not, these constraints are bound to affect the speed at which we can make progress. But we must overcome these constraints when it's right to do so, precisely because the sector can contribute so much to growth and to reducing business and household costs. So let me refer to some examples of how we are uh, taking this forward. We're continuing the Courtauld commitment into the third phase, recognising its potential to reduce costs for business and households, uh, drive environmental gains and improve product design. Uh, and we are pushing this model into new sectors, for example, uh, the hospitality, food and service agreement, doing uh, a similar thing for restaurants, pubs, hotels, canteens and so on. We're providing support for AD, uh, renewable energy incentives uh, and the strategy and action plan to examine uh, barriers to investment. We're providing support for plastics recycling and infrastructure, uh, for, uh, for instance through uh, a specific plastics loan fund. We've established the Green Investment Bank with waste as a priority, supporting infrastructure and AD. We're regulating to improve quality at uh, MRFs and to improve the take-up uh, relative to, um, uh, sorry, to, to improve the recycling market um, and to improve the um, take-up relative to virgin raw materials. And of course, wider government policy is creating opportunities for businesses to operate in the UK. For example, bringing corporation tax down to 20% by 2015, from 28% in 1112, uh, at which point uh, we will be the lowest in the G20. The most significant part of government strategy must be setting the conditions that allow the market, businesses, local authorities and individual people to make the changes that will propel us towards the long-term vision. And despite the constraints I mentioned just now, there is a huge amount of action here, and some examples of which are, first, uh, I mentioned earlier the Waste Prevention Programme, which will go out to consultation shortly, uh, and it'll uh, be very interesting indeed to see your responses to that. Uh, secondly, the packaging targets, which set a market mechanism for industry to respond, uh, driving the change we badly need to see. For instance, increasing plastic recycling to 42% by 2017. Thirdly, the recent consultation on the MRF Code of Practice, a mandatory approach to give the market the confidence and information to drive recycled provision in place of virgin materials. Fourth, helping the public understand how to move waste up the hierarchy through encouragement rather than stick. Uh, so we're working through RAP, uh, business and local authorities to deliver love, food, hate, waste. And we're funding 25 organizations, uh, most of them local authorities, to trial schemes which reward and recognize householders for doing the right thing and we'll publish the details of the best schemes. Fifth, we're looking at barriers to investment. Uh, last month, month, we held a really very well attended uh, investor symposium to look at some of these issues. And the key messages from that I took away were that there are uh, real opportunities for this sector uh, for investment, that consistency and co continuity of government policy is very important, and that there's an important role for business and investors in developing the sector. Sixth, there's a floor under the landfill tax at 80 pounds, providing a continued disincentive to landfill. And then 
Seventh, in the area of enforcement, and I know that's something that's very close to a number of your hearts, uh, re we've refocused the Environment Agency's efforts on dealing with those illegal operations that pose the biggest risks to the environment and communities or are having the biggest impacts on legitimate businesses. We're helping them target enforcement more effectively, so we recently consulted on giving them access to HMRC uh, export data. We're supporting work by the Sentencing Council to ensure fines for illegal dumping act as a proper deterrent. And we're working to provide greater powers for the seizure of vehicles suspected of involvement in waste crime. Rome wasn't built in a day. There is a real opportunity to drive growth and improve the environment in a more circular economy. Our constraints, industry dynamics, and local government contracts mean we have to plan over an extended period. Everyone, government, industry, communities, and civil society organizations have a stake in making this happen. And I'm confident that people want to do the right thing. It's a question of making it easy for them and of setting the conditions to allow the market, businesses, and people to effect the changes necessary. Thank you very much. Thank you.